What is happening guys? Cowboy here and I am excited to finally bring you part one of our Death's Gambit walkthrough. Now I had a chance to go hands on with this game a little while back. Uh, instantly fell in love with it. The musical score is top tier. The animation and pixel art here are phenomenal. The gameplay is nice and tight and fluid. It's basically everything I want in a 2D Souls League. So here we are, finally, with the full game, ready to go. Uh, now this is going to be a walkthrough very similar to the 100% style walkthroughs I do for Dark Souls. If you want to see my uh, first experience of everything, more Let's Play, if you will, that'll also be uploaded, but I'll be streaming that, so it'll be in like long three, four hour chunks. Uh, but either way, the first thing we have up is selecting a class. Now there are three main classes I would suggest going with if you're new. Those are Blood Knight, mainly because we're able to regain health after taking an attack, very similar to the Rally Mechanic in Bloodborne, which I feel is really nice for newer players. Uh, the Acolyte of Death, because one, you get a Scythe, which is really cool, and you have to go quite a ways through the game before you're going to find one if you don't have it here. Uh, but more importantly, you can restore broken death idols, which is really nice because you'll find idols that have been broken that are... Uh, basically closer to the objective of the bosses, that means less running, shorter recovery time if you die, and without an Acolyte of Death you can't restore those. Um, however, I'm going to suggest you run with a Sentinel here, mainly because the Sentinel's perk makes it so that you can equip any weapon or shield with half of the stats required, which is honestly really, really potent, especially considering how powerful some of the items in the game are. So we're going to be going with Sentinel. Uh, as for our item here, a decent starting choice is the Vados Helm. Um, you know, 5 vitality isn't much, but it'll definitely help keep our health a bit higher for quite a while. Uh, aside from that, some other considerations. Soul Stone isn't too bad. Uh, 5 Soul Stones is what you get from killing like a Crystal Lizard, so it's, you know, it's a decent chunk of them. Uh, Shield of Warding we find a little bit later into the game. Spellbinder's Aura is decent if we are playing as an elemental type class, but you know, otherwise uh, having the intellect isn't going to really help us that much. So we're going to go for the Vados Helm, and let's get things started. Playing dead, were you? Shame it's always the cowards that survive. Considering the fate of your men, I thought I'd do them a service. My men, they're all... Go back to Vados. You have an obligation to their families now. Come back so soon. Pain. It's like I'm burning from the inside out. Better get used to it. This contract will resurrect you in service to me. Rest assured, your mind and actions will be your own. Though why you mortals insist in glorifying a self-aggrandizing hoax is beyond me. In return, you must do something for me. What can I possibly do for you? Give it time. For now, just sign here. In blood, of course. Death's contract. <clears throat> so I'll be doing all the original voice acting for Soren. Just putting my my sexy voice over his since the protagonist is left unvoiced for you to use your imagination. Or in my case, but uh, I can be the voice. Either way, let's get this party going. Who's ready to go? I'm ready to go. Right. Welcome to Gaian's Cradle. Grab the crow plume right there. Hop on up. <clears throat> All of these tombstones have inscriptions that you can use uh, to basically read your tips. Shoot that down. Make sure to put on your Vado Helm if you picked it. Go grab the Leaf of Gaia, which Leaves of Gaia are nice, however, I would be... Actually, let me it for now. Um, use them sparingly. Basically, they are kind of rare to come by. The idea here is it's 100% heal, as well as removing all ailments from your character, so it's kind of like an oh shit button. Um, you probably won't need one until later. Anyway, we'll be on 
down over here with the horse, and we will grab the first energy diamond. Three of those to open the gate. You can rest here, it doesn't really matter. Uh, we're not going to end up using this, this uh, statue anyway. Keep an eye out when enemies go on their back swings. Like how you can see that sword coming all the way back there. Like that. The back swings can hit you and they do hurt, so just something to be aware of. Do you have a death wish? Don't think I can die, actually. Eluding death gives you a god complex, I see. If you intend to squander your life, go right on ahead. I'm sure your men are eager to see you, but should you think twice, take one of these. They're restorative plumes. Use it to ensure your return to Vados. Consider it the last kindness I offer you. Not sure burning me alive is a kindness. Compared to what lies ahead, I assure you it is. Now if you want, you can kill Vrail. Uh, every NPC in the game you can aggro and they drop stuff. Um, I don't really think it's worth it. If you, you kill him, you get a... basically a... aura item. And what it does is it makes it so that you have like 13% damage reduction, but as you take damage, you lose shards. So, not really worth it in my opinion. Anyway, we're gonna head forward uh, for these guys just block and then kick, basically left trigger, right trigger. Oh, grab the Zealot's Cape. You don't really need to get this, but I'm getting it just because it's here. It's the one charge. It's actually garbage. Uh, the Cape, however, adds four hits, so put that on. And you can see here, this requires two strength, and it has F toughness, whereas this has C toughness. Basically, the wooden charge is uh, garbage. Your movement speed while blocking is faster. It's like if you really, really don't see yourself blocking much, it's a go-to. And while we're sitting here, let's talk about some combat things real fast. We have uh, three main things. We have our basic attack, which is three hits. We have a rolling attack, and we have the jumping attack. Uh, that's the same for every weapon. Every single weapon has that combination of things. Another note is when you jump, you can attack to give yourself a little extra distance. Kind of how you saw there, I was able to do that to make it to the middle platform. There, kill this guy. Drop down, grab the Fragile Courage. This thing's pretty cool, increases your vitality by 15, but if you die, it breaks. So, um, I'd say it's honestly one of the, the better auras to have on. Especially early on if you're playing careful, because 15 vitality is certainly nothing to scoff at. Just here. And we can level up. Let's pump some into strength real fast. And it's time to get our first ability. So, with every class in the game, you can attack enemies to gain energy. Um, however, each class also has a special mechanic surrounding it. Uh, in some cases, that special mechanic will give them more energy. Uh, the death knight, it's, you know, restores his health, but... Uh, in most places, it involves extra energy gain. Our class, for example, gets an extra energy gain through parrying enemies. Um, some classes get it through blocking enemies. Some get it through dodging. Some get it through using items or healing. It really depends on what you're playing, and it says all that at the start if you're not used. So, go on and grab the energy diamond over here. And we are ready to go.
And we'll put this Patty Reeves. And we're gonna drop Bone down. Mr. Draft Man. for him. Get that book. The Owl King, royal only in name, has no subjects of its own to speak of, but the hearts of men are just as easily provoked by titles. So for each of the bosses, there are two tomes you can find that will give you bonus damage against the boss. Uh, now in here, there is a Golden Knight. I would suggest not fighting this guy right now. Uh, if you do insist on taking him out, gain access to Surging Soul, which is a aura that makes it so that you gain extra energy. Um, it's a really nice aura, it's just this guy's a pain in the dick, and I don't really think he's worth fighting at this point. If you are absolutely flawless on your parries, maybe, um, I would suggest coming back later when you're around level like 30 or Anyway, back outside, grab the crow plume that's right here on the ground. And we'll proceed on forward. Think but a humble servants. Get the there we go. Get the lizard. So you might be like, oh my god, you just killed a merchant. That's Fink. Um basically Fink looks like a merchant, but he sells you literal garbage. Um nothing that he sells is valuable. Dog trash, and um, he basically comes back throughout the game to try and mess with us. So just boop him in the face, get rid of him, be on your way. All right, <clears throat> now that we've leveled up, one thing I want to discuss real fast here is augmenting. Now, when we die in Death Gambit, we drop our plumes instead of dropping our shards. So um, to put it in Souls term, every time you die, you're dropping a Estus Flask charge instead of your Souls. You can imagine how that's annoying. Now you can spend your shards to get back your plumes. However, you can also do this, augment feathers, and basically uh, store the plumes with death to give you a damage increase. So with zero held, I can't heal at all, but I have a 130% damage increase. Uh, personally, I like to keep one plume on me at all times. In later areas, I'll usually keep two, uh, and the rest I put towards damage because having that augment is going to let me hit just that much harder. Ooh, the light grease. Gotta like the strength game. Uh, as for the phoenix, you can actually kill the phoenix. It takes a while. If you're playing as Finesse, you might be able to bow him down. Uh, Mage can kind of do it. Every other class, it's a pain in the ass. Honestly, I don't think it's worth killing him. You get, you get some extra souls out of it, but it's kind of like, eh. Just to kind of show you the damage we're getting in here. Yeah. You could sit, I mean, if you really want to, you could. You could do exactly what you see me doing right now. But we are uh, basically tickling him. We're going to have to do that something like 40, 50 times to uh, get him low enough. Kill that guy, roll and hold uh, to the left here. So we get the Covenant Shield. We'll put that on. As you can see it had B toughness. And then we're going to this way. And bust this chest. Up. Aura of Blood. Well, the Aura of Blood is uh, pretty nice, but I feel that you can't really get the most benefit out of it right now. This is our second Owl King Tome. 
slaves than monarchs. These beasts appeared in droves. Uh, basically, at the third hit, our combo finisher is 5% and above 70%. But the thing is, we have such low health right now that we don't really get a lot of bang for our buck, basically. Um, go here. We are going to all of our plumes in for this next part. And no healing, even if it means you're going to die. No healing for at least uh, the next 20 seconds here. Okay, so we're coming up on a mini boss fight, but we don't want to heal beforehand because there's some stuff we can get if we don't heal. Either. What happened to them? An explanation for another time. Seems we have a straggler. Thanks to my enemy. I trust you won't disappoint. For your sake. You're a survivor, are you not? It is not too late. Return from whence you came. No one left to return to. You're not the only orphan of war. But perhaps you'll be the last. Know that I do this to put an end to tragedies like yours. And if your sacrifice is necessary to my mission, then so be it. So... If you can get off a parry on Ioni, you can almost one-shot her. Uh, to parry, you would basically hold the left trigger down and hit either X or square. Oh, there it is. Boom! Your meddling will have dire consequences. If you do die, uh, when you come back, she has a second bit of dialogue. And now we get our first talent point, Sentinel's Might. Now, the talent trees for... All purposes here they're basically identical um, you know with a sentinel it's sentinels might with an acolyte it's like acolytes might or whatever um, this doubles a soul energy gain by parrying with the acolyte it's a soul energy by killing so it's the same general stuff um, but for the most part the town trees are almost identical uh, being classes so that in mind and here is a final energy diamond and that gives us access to the boss Now we're not done just yet. Hop up here. And because we didn't heal at all, we can open this bad boy. And we have the quickening plume, which is quite nice. Our plume right now is 120 health, 1.5 second. This is 170 and a 1 second. So it's just you know, faster. Anyway, run straight off that. Jump and swing. Jump and swing. Hop on. And now we have the marksman aura, which is pretty nice if you're playing with archery. Gives you a 20% increase to the strength of your arrows at the cost of a 20% increase to uh, how expensive dodging is. Um, and... Do, 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 yep, at this point we are ready to go. So, bumper on down. Up on our mount. And into the Rider's Passage we go call this place the highway. Um, this, the, the Rider's Passage, is the equivalent of, like, our, uh, our fast travel system in this game. Um, basically, as you proceed through the game, there's lots of little areas like this where you're just like, oh, and you can hop on up and, and climb, and you're like, oh, look, there's stuff right up there. Um, and then you can use the bell to call over your horse from any one of them. That one in particular is actually this, like, super crazy optional boss. Um, we fought him on stream, and uh, I mean, it, it basically just destroyed me. You can kind of see the area, um, but yeah, it's it's insane. I feel like that's that it's something you fight at like the end of the game for shits and giggles. A couple other things coming up here. Once we get to ah, go. Now uh, we'll drop down here to grab the forgotten guy in book. Child of Gaia enslaved as the first and final defense for Siridin. Most have been dormant for generations. We're gonna be. That's basically a, a boss that's right up here, which we're gonna be fighting in a little bit. But for now, we're gonna be resting. And we're gonna level up. I'm gonna get one there. I'm gonna get. Inch of dirt. You know what? One more strength. Give me that strength. We are gonna take endurance up to 10 shortly. And now it's time for our first real boss, the Owl King. Um, so if you want heals, 
pull a plume out. I think it's worth having one, but beyond that, I just don't think it's needed. See, two tombs deal 10% more damage. Uh, a couple things. He has that charge that has a heavy backswing. He has the thrust. He has a, that portal thing, which, if you're behind, it'll go behind you. If you're in front, it'll go in front of you. But you can actually manipulate that pretty uh, easily to dictate where it's going to go. Also, a lot of bosses have a stagger threshold. Usually, it's around three hits. Phase two, I'll do these portals. Oh, up that one plume. Oh, shouldn't really be a problem. So, with that, my head. Now, uh, we're going to be unlocking that a bit later, but for now, we'll drop down and then we just look at that. A big old collection of items, as well as an ability. Um, right now, you can't get to this, but as you die throughout the game, bodies will pile up here. And as the bodies pile up, eventually, you're able to just climb right on up there and grab the stuff. So, as you've continued to die throughout the game, come back here, eventually you'll be able to get a bunch of stuff just for dying. Here we go. So as you can see, there's kind of like a lock right here. It only opens from the right side. That's what I meant by it being kind of like an underground highway. And we got Winding Hue. We'll head on up to our central hub sanctuary. So, uh, we're going to be wrapping this video up here for now, but we will have another part coming your way. Um, as for how often to expect these, uh, as I mentioned with We Happy Few, um, at least one a day for now. If I have time, I'm going to try and get two a day out of this since it is a walkthrough and I'd like to have it out and finished closer to the start of the game. But as I'm going to be leaving on a trip this weekend, uh, I kind of find it unlikely. So we'll see what happens. But either way, guys, uh, I will definitely have another part up for you tomorrow. We'll at least have a good chunk for week one here. So either way, thanks for coming by. Hope you guys enjoyed part one of the walkthrough. And see you next time as we knock out Sanctuary, the northern portion of Sanctuary, and make our way to the Lost Gaian.